Well, good morning and uh, welcome to uh, Delaware Valley Outdoors. I'm your host, Bob Murray. And we're here this morning over at Lake Galena, which is in Peace Valley Park, which is just outside of uh, Doylestown. Uh, we're gonna try a little bit of fishing this morning. It looks, looks real good this morning. We're, we're supposed to have some uh, thunder showers and stuff, but I think we're okay there. And uh, we're gonna try to catch some fish. And later on in the show, we're gonna be talking to uh, some of the park people and uh, learn a little bit more about the Lake Galena. So let's see what happens. We're here at the breast of the dam on Lake Galena this morning. And we're going to be working the dam early this morning, see if we can pick up some fish. What we have in front of us, uh, what we call riprap, and that's just large rocks that they've placed on the breast of the dam to actually protect the dam. And what I'm attempting to do here is throw a crankbait up into the rocks and see if we can get some bass to bite on it. Now the fish usually are working these areas because minnows, uh, crayfish, uh, little aquatic life like that are usually hung up in the rocks and it's easy for the fish to uh, go after them and it's a good hiding place for both, both the bass and, uh, and crayfish and minnows. So what we're going to try to do is see if we can throw a crankbait up in there and see if we can get something to to hit it. I'm using a fairly big crankbait to looks like a shad or a white perch. Now they do have a lot of perch in this lake, white perch and crappie. So I'm going to see if we can do something. You can see how I'm casting to the rocks, to the riprap. I'm putting my lure right right at the rocks. I want it in the rocks. I don't want it a foot off the rocks. I want to try to get my lure right into the rocks as best I can because I want it to be bouncing off those rocks. I really want it to be digging down in there as, as much as possible to bang and knock and crack and bump and whatever I possibly can do to get that bait to look like an injured bait fish. There we are, the little fish. Oops. 
There we go. I hooked him good. Well, he's a little one, but we got one anyway. Now that was a, again, that fish was up in the rocks and I switched back over to a crankbait because the sun came out here and I wanted to see if I could get down a little bit, but you can just see from that, the fish are still up in the, up in the rocks, even with the sun out. And we got some high, high clouds now. The other thing that I did do, I, sw I went to a smaller bait, and hopefully that might have triggered it. Well, we shall see. We can actually get another fish here. That'd be nice. There we go. Now we're starting to pick up the fish. There's a little better fish. I'm here, sweetheart. There we go. Another nice fish. We're going to take a, a break from the fishing right now and we stopped over at the um, Mercer Museum. We're at the Pottery Works right now and we're just going to take a quick tour of the uh, Pottery Works. So uh, let's go. Okay, Adam, could you try to go explain to us now what we're, what we're watching right now? Sure. Many of the tiles that we produce are pressed using this tile press. Um, we use a local clay and uh, we'll cut a slab of clay, much like Evelyn's doing now, mm -hmm. place a mold on top of it and then press it using the press. Um, what's determining thickness is Evelyn. She's taking it to a set thickness um, and can pretty much reproduce a half inch thickness consistently. So she she's actually determines how thick these tiles yeah. are, are going to be. You'll see some variation from tile to tile, but for the most part they're about a half inch thick. That's amazing. You know, you, you mentioned where you get your clay and I, I really like to have that mentioned. Tell us exactly where you get your clay. Uh, we get our clay from the Lake Towie area. Uh, lake Towie, for those of you who are, aren't familiar with it, uh, the lake above Lake Nakamixon, which in the near future we're going to be doing a show uh, about, so I think we're going to be able to see some of that clay uh, 
up there when we, when we get to Lake Towie. Um, now, some of these, what are, these are, um, I see they're labeled. What, now, what yeah. was this one here? These molds are our uh, Yucatan designs, and uh, if you look at the design, it's reversed. So when we press this into the clay, we'll okay, get a positive. We'll get a positive. Uh, um, and uh, this is that Yucatan series that I had mentioned. Um, we've got uh, uh, the creation of Eve here, and I believe Ev is working on mostly Yucatan designs right now. I've, I've pressed both. Um. Okay, now that, that is one type. Now, you have another type that you said you were going to show us? Yeah, these, these tiles are what we refer to as our flat tiles. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're pressed tiles. Mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, another design which we refer to as a brocade tile. And this is a tile where the thickness of the tile is determined by the mold itself. I see. And we're, you're going to show me those when we go over to the hand painting yeah. room? Okay. Yeah. And, uh, um, okay. This tile here, what is, is this the uh, one we're talking yeah, about this before? This is the uh, picking apples design. Okay. And uh, here you can see we'll press the clay into this and when we uh, scrape off the surface, we'll have a tile that is a set thickness. I the see. other one, the thickness is determined by Evelyn. Uh, I see. Okay. And Evelyn's pressing that out right now. The, okay, uh, so she's going to press... Apples oh, mosaic, uh, okay. Brocade. She's, uh -huh. she's going to put the tile, or the clay in that tile, like that. And she'll press it in first with her fingers and make sure that she's got all the detail. This clay is a uh, it's a very ornery clay. It's full of impurities, um, and uh, that's something that, that we value. Um, every piece comes out different as a result. So it's not a standard thing you're going to get each time. Each no, time you press one. from batch to batch. From batch to batch. Now, do you do, when you get the clay from uh, Lake Toe, do you do anything with it other than just... We just add it? water. Just add water to it. Yeah. Okay, that's now all. she's pressed it, and so... so now that she's got it all pressed uh -huh. in, she's going to cut across the top with the wire remove that surface, stamp it with our logo, and everything that we produce has our logo and the year that it was produced in. That's and that's allowed to dry for a bit. Um, it's uh, about five minutes or so, mm -hmm. and then we can pop the tiles out. And then you can pop this out and mm -hmm. we actually get to see yeah. one. In fact, okay, I was okay. removing the ones she pressed earlier. Could I? The edges are tamped down to clean it up. Uh -huh. Otherwise, we have this little burr all over them. That's... And this is uh, a, a Yucatan? Mm -hmm. one, one of our Yucatan designs. That's a shoulder cloth design. Uh -huh. And that will be then dried and then fired. Yep. I see. All right. Thank These you. These are lifted from Mayan pictographs. And Mercer went there, I guess? Did yeah. He, did he traveled there? All right. Well, thank you, Evelyn. I'll sure. hand it back to you here. I don't know. Just set it right down. All right, thank you, Adam, and I guess we'll go on to the next part and you'll show us how to hand paint these tiles. Okay. All right, um, Adam, we're at a kiln right here. Uh, can you give us just a little bit of information about the, the process we're, gonna, we're seeing here right now? Yeah, after our clay has dried, um, we'll rack it and put it into kilns, um, fire them. The process takes about three days. Uh, they're fired to, well, we use cones for temperature and uh, those are these little devices. They melt at specific temperatures. This is about, uh, I'd say about 2100 degrees Fahrenheit. That will melt at 2100. So that's what you're basically firing. That's what we're looking at, yeah. The, the heat in there is about that. And you said what, about three days this will be? It's a three day cycle. cycle. Um, we have a day of loading and unloading the kiln, uh -huh. um, a day of firing it. And, okay. and in the case of this particular firing, it will go through to about uh, seven in the evening. Oh, really? And uh, then it's allowed to cool a full day and then we unload it and load and it I, again. I, I know we were just taking some out and uh, they're still warm. Oh they're yeah. They're still warm. Now this is a plain tile I see and then we have some up here. Can I pick this one up? Sure. Okay, we have one up here. Uh, if we can get that. Um, it's just a, a tile that you would what? Uh, These are our tree labels. Tree label. I see. I see. That you would put in on your trees and stuff like that. Yeah, this particular firing doesn't have a lot of decorative tiles. Our decorative tiles tend to come out of our glaze kilns. Okay, well, let's, well, maybe we can get a chance to see that. Okay. Okay, Adam, we're here now where you're, I guess, putting one of those more colorful mosaics like we had, you had mm -hmm. talked about before together. Could you describe uh, what we're seeing here right now? Well, this is our uh, nativity mosaic. 
and uh, we start with a mold. We'll lay a slab of clay onto a mold and get all the impression off of that. And then uh, we'll flip it off and start to cut all the pieces apart. Um, when they're cut apart, certain pieces will go into uh, different types of firings. Mm -hmm. um, some pieces will be bisced and then glazed again. Um, other pieces will go into uh, the uh, uh, finished fire kiln where they'll come out that brick red color. And uh, yet others will be packed in saggers with sawdust and smoked. And then we'll put it all together and set it in concrete to have right, a finished I piece. See. Uh, so now this will be colored and, and whatnot at the final ending of this thing. Mm -hmm. It'll be all colored, not just like the, the red that we saw right. before. How long does this process, this one, take to put together and fire? And From beginning to end, it yeah. takes four months. Four months to do yeah. this one. Uh, to one have piece. it as a complete set piece. That's amazing. Okay, let's go on to uh, some hand painting. Okay, we're in the hand painting room. Is that what mm -hmm. we would call this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know you've gotten some tiles out here to show us. Uh, why don't you take us through the process? Okay, when we start out with a piece, um, we'll press it out of a mold and we'll have a, uh, a terracotta piece that we're allowed to dry. Mm -hmm. And then once it's dried, we'll fire it. That first firing we call a bis firing. Mm -hmm. It will come out this sort of uh, terracotta color. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Um, and at that point, we'll. Uh, We'll start applying a glaze onto it, the, the uh, piece, and uh, okay. now what, we'll this use a brush. Is, this is actually depicting something. What is it? Yeah, this uh, image is uh, picking apples. Picking apples. I see. So we put this as a, a just a, a glaze on there, right? Mm -hmm. just a we'll paint the glaze on with a brush. Um, there's a number of different colors that go onto it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all based on originals mm -hmm. in terms of color pattern. Mm -hmm. And um, once that's completed, it'll be placed in a kiln and fired again. So it's fired once, fired again this time to a slightly higher temperature, and then when we get the piece out, it will be a glossy glazed piece. So from this, what we saw right, this last one here, after it's fired again, it will come out and look like, like that. That is absolutely beautiful, absolutely be beautiful. Now, how long does this process take? Is this uh, a month, or, or is this just a... No, the, uh, the glazing months? process itself takes mm -hmm. a few days. Mm -hmm. That's presuming we have the item in stock ready mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. I see. That's very pretty. Now, I see some other ones here that we just are just in the process. Someone will come in here and mm -hmm. be painting those uh, as we do it. Here's a, a bird. And uh, now, what will these be used for again? Will this just be uh, any kind of decorations? <laughs> well, uh, these, I um, think, tend to be used more for Christmas ornaments. Christmas than ornaments? Else. These I, are holly. I see. I see. Okay, that's very good. All right, thank you, madam. You're welcome. Okay, we're in uh, another magnificent room of the tile works uh, and this fireplace has a, a, a title to it. Uh, Adam, can you tell us just a little bit about this fireplace here that we're looking at? This is uh, our Bible fireplace and the designs were all based on Moravian stove plates that Mercer had collected. Um, many of them are we can trace directly back to a stove plate. In fact, there's a stove plate over there that we can match up with one of the uh, mosaics. This one has a uh, the image of the grenadiers and the, uh, uh, I believe there are two uh, figures shaking hands where we have them right here as uh, direct quotations of the uh, stove plate. And they do um, a short lecture in here when you, when you come to the thing? Yeah, when you come to the tall works, you'll uh, see a slide presentation of about 15, 20 minutes and uh, then get to walk through at your leisure. A small admission fee is charged. Okay, thank you. Oops, We're in the retail aspect of the uh, tile shop. Uh, Adam, can you just give us a little bit of information about the um, retail aspect of the Marie Potter Works? Uh, well, we sell a lot of our tiles and mosaics uh, to folks who are putting in installations. Um, in many cases, fireplaces, hearths, uh, sometimes bathroom installations. I see. I know you have a lot of small tiles back there, and I see some very large ones here. I know we had talked a little bit about some of the nice ones. Tell us about your biggest seller over here. I want to. Well, the, the silver vocats are our most popular mosaic design. Uh, we produce about 50, 60 of those a year. They take four months to produce from start to finish. So that's a very intricate tile to actually produce, but mm -hmm. you sell quite a few of those. Oh, yeah. And where do they put them? In like a fireplace or? Uh, many people will place them right over a fireplace. Right over uh, a fireplace. In some cases, right on a wall. I see you have some candle holders here and some of these smaller ones. Can you just go about with these small ones. Are these the theme ones you had talked about before? Yeah, we, 
we use a lot of uh, our tiles in, in thematic groupings. Uh -huh. um, so many folks will work with these uh, ships, say, as a grouping around the fireplace. Uh, we also have ships as square tiles that go around fireplaces. Some folks will use the Canterbury tiles. We have mythological cities and uh, uh, Yucatan images. So you can basically create anything you want within the yeah, we have quite a number have. of themes. I see, I see. Adam, thank you very much. I appreciate the tour. It was My pleasure. excellent help. I, we'll get back to uh, some of this in a little bit, but right now we're going to jump to uh, some fishing and uh, see what we can catch again. Like I was saying before, again, you have to really stay with the pattern, stay with it. And we worked pretty hard to go on to these fish today. There's another fish. They seem to be just up in those rocks right now. There's another one. Okay, we're, we were out fishing this morning and we did a a really nice job. We caught some fish, uh, enjoyed the park a lot. I'm here right now with uh, Charlie First, the superintendent of the park. Uh, Charlie, let's just talk a little bit about the park itself. Um, how about the, the fishing? What, what's it all involved in the fishing in the park? How many fish do we have here? What's going on? Bob, um, yeah, here at Peace Valley Park, um, with the help of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission, we uh, have quite an aggressive um, stocking policy. The lake has been stocked since 1974 with um, a variety of freshwater fish. Last year alone, we stocked well over a million walleye and uh, walleye fingerlings and walleye fry. Um, now there are also uh, an assortment of panfish, catfish, uh, bass, the walleye, of course, and uh, muskie and pickerel. Uh, the primary game fish here now or the largest populations of game fish consist of the walleye and the largemouth bass. This morning, Charlie, we were out fishing and uh, we used the, the ramp at the far end. And a lot of times when I'm, I'm doing seminars and, and talking about the different lakes, they always ask me, well, we can't get into Peace Valley because it's always locked up. And I try to explain to them about the uh, fisherman's ramp. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, here at Peace Valley Park, um, we have a uh, special use parking lot um, for boaters to launch their boats on the southwest corner of the lake. That's off a of creek road uh, closest to the dam. That area is available, like I said, 24 hours a day, and um, that can be used for fishermen to uh, launch, launch their boats as well. All right, so guys can get in there at night or early in the morning and there's really no problem. That's right, Bob. So let's just talk a little bit about the other recreational uh, facilities you have here at Peace Valley. I know we talked a little bit about the pavilion, which we're under now. Uh, tell us more about the pavilions and some of the other recreational uh, facilities you have here. Yeah, there are, uh, we have five pavilions that are situated in different areas around the lake. There's two pavilions on the south side and three on the north side. And they are available for rent and reservation through the uh, main office at Core Creek Park. So if you're having a picnic or something like that with a big group of people, you could uh, rent these things? That's right, yeah, you could rent them. How about the other facilities, the boat rentals? The, I see some trails. There's a lot of people jogging this morning. What else is involved here now? 
Yeah, here at Peace Valley Park, there's also a, a bike and hike path that uh, goes about three quarters of the way around the lake. It's not a continuous loop. Um, we are looking into ways to uh, making the, uh, the bike and hike path a complete circle, but as of now, between the roadways and the bike and hike path, you can go around the park, but uh, there again, you'd have to actually spend some time out on the road, which some people do not want to do. Um, as far as the boat rental goes, um, the boat rental is um, open during the summer. It actually opens up on uh, Memorial Day weekend and closes uh, on Labor Day. Um, at those times, it is open um, every day. Uh, after Labor Day, it's only open on weekends up until the middle of November. Mm -hmm. But uh, we do have sailboats, rowboats, uh, paddle boats, and canoes available for rent. Okay. All right, well, thank you, Charlie. Um, it was a really nice day today. Thank you for your time. And um, we'll be back uh, next week with another uh, segment of uh, Delaware Valley Outdoors.